Hey everyone, this is Zach, and today I am here at uh, InfoSec World 2018. This is day two, and I have uh, Clint Gibbler here with me, and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself and what he does. Sure. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so my name is Clint Gibbler. I'm a security consultant at NCC Group. Uh, what we do is penetration testing, which is companies hire us to come in and assess the security of their web applications or networks or mobile apps or even hardware or crypto they've done to try to find bugs in it so that we can tell them, hey, this is a security issue. Uh, here's how to fix it. Here's some recommendations so that they can improve their software or network security over time so that they can keep their users safer. Awesome. Awesome. How did you... How did you first get into IT in general? Not necessarily the space you're in right now, um, but what really drew you to the technology field? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think that it started when I was younger. I played a lot of video games, and then that led to like, hey, I'm curious about how computers work. You know, I, I'm using them uh, for enjoyment, but at a lower level, you know, how did these get built? What is programming and things like that? So I took a couple of programming courses, and then. Uh, sort of one thing led to another and I just started trying to get internships in the field and uh, it's just what I've been pursuing ever since. Yeah. Uh, what games did you play? I know people are probably going to ask in the comments, so we can knock that off real yeah. quick. Yeah, uh, I'd say uh, Age of Empires 2, uh, Age of Kings, um, Starcraft, um, a, a couple of like RPG type things, uh, okay. but yeah, a lot of Age of Kings. Awesome. So, um, your path to get into to IT or technology in general. Um, did you go to school? Did you teach yourself? Get certifications? What, what kind of path was it that you took? Yeah, so I took a sort of traditional path and many people don't do this, but at least for me, uh, I went to college and focused in computer science. I then went to grad school also focusing in computer science, but with a specific focus on security. And then I went straight into industry uh, being a security engineer, uh, internally at a company and then now a security consultant. So while I have sort of a standard, you know, oh, this is how things are supposed to go type path, I've worked with countless people who are brilliant, who had a very, very different path. Right, right. Um, when you were in school then, did you do internships along the way, like while you were in school? You know, how did you get experience or did you get experience while you were in college or when you graduated, you just went right into the field and see that? into that role. Yes, I, I did do a couple of internships. Uh, and I, I would say that if you are in college, I would highly, highly encourage you to get internships, ideally doing the type of work that you want to do, because I, I felt like school and the internships were very complementary. So school is giving you some nice theoretical knowledge about like, you know, in general, this is the history of this, this is how it works, but then industry is teaching you, oh, this is what people actually care about, this is what your day-to-day -day is. and. At school, I felt like I learned some useful things, and then the internship uh, taught me more, which I then brought back to school and made me better at school. And so they're they're mutually beneficial. So uh, after freshman year, uh, every summer I did an internship, and then in grad school I did a couple of internships as well, um, all mostly at different companies doing t different types of work. Okay, and that's stuff that you put on your resume as you were going out to the field for your first time. Yes, so, so definitely the, the first internship is the hardest because you don't necessarily have relevant work experience, but then the second internship, it's like, oh, you've already done some uh, industry-related work, so you probably at least know a little bit about what you're doing, so it's sort of a compounding thing where each next time is easier. Right, okay. So I'm just trying to give everybody uh, an idea because a lot of times I say, you know, if you guys aren't getting experience, you know, even if you're in college, you're not getting experience, you're not doing internships, uh, or even volunteer work, you know, you can get volunteer work at some organizations doing stuff or like nonprofits and things like that where you'll get experience. Um, it's really hard to graduate from college and then get right into the role or the field that you, you desperately want to get into. Um, do you do you kind of agree with that, or do you have anything to share about about that specifically? About because you you like did something I think that's not atypical. You know, you went right into um, a security role. Um, do you see a lot of that though from college or do you see people who have to kind of start at a, a different point, you know, maybe help desk type of deal uh, if they're working on the IT side, not so much the programming. Um, have you seen any of that? Yeah, uh, so some people do go directly into security, but I would say that's 
perhaps not the average, uh, because in many universities, it's, there's not a formal security curriculum. There's uh, you know, maybe one or two classes max. Uh, so a lot of times, people who go into security have done a lot of reading on their own time, either you know, blogs, uh, just various tutorials or exercises online, or uh, doing a lot of self-learning. Um, I will say there are different areas of security, and different ones are easier or harder to get into. Um, so this isn't a complete description of every possible area of security, but, but so a few examples, there's uh, you know, cryptography, which is uh, very mathematical and uh, does a lot of like, encrypting data and protecting data, either in transit or at rest. Then you have reverse engineering, which is taking uh, programs that have already been compiled and sort of trying to figure out how they work, even if you don't have the source code. Uh, that can be done to uh, find bugs or for other purposes. Uh, there's application security, which is more what I do, which is uh, you know someone has spent a lot of time building a program and you're trying to find uh, bugs in it to try to harden it and make it more secure for all the users. Uh, there's network security, which is um, either externally, that is someone is trying to say hack into a company and figure out uh, you know what services are listening, what's there, or internal security if you're already inside a corporation, like what can you see from the inside? Uh, because oftentimes the inside is not as hardened. Um, so the reason I'm saying all these things is because some of those things, if you're wanting to get immediately into security, are easier to get into immediately than others. Right. So for example, if you want to start doing security as soon as possible professionally, I would encourage you not to pursue cryptography or reverse engineering as your main focus because those require a large amount of upfront knowledge and, and time investment. But if you're like, hey, I want to do this stuff all the time, then probably application security or more network security type stuff is what will get you in there faster. Yeah. And a lot of security engineering roles look for people with, say, two to five years of experience already because most organizations are uh, time strapped for uh, you know, having enough people and them having enough time. Lots of security people are like, I've got 10 jobs already. I, I, can't, I can't train you. I need someone who can contribute on day one. Um, but one way that can be good is getting into uh, security consulting, which is um, what I do, which is essentially we have people who are very, very skilled, but we also welcome people who are newer but passionate about it. And they're like, hey, uh, I don't know a ton yet, but I'm super motivated. I'm going to learn a ton, expose me to everything, and I'll grow to the challenge. Yeah, um, that's huge right there. That's having that attitude and expressing that attitude, especially in interviews. You can share that. You know, you're, you're more likely to get hired even though you may not have the experience fully, but if you have that great attitude, that great energy, that, that willingness to learn more, that always helps. That's yeah, definitely. Uh, I will say that's something we actually look for in interviews, which is, uh, yes, we ask a bunch of technical questions and have some hands-on technical uh, challenges that we expect people to perform, but a, a factor that we do also look at is, you know, hey, is this person... You know, where are they technically, but also how motivated are they? You know, can we put them in a room and say, you need to learn this uh, in the next week or in the next few days. Like, will they do it? Are they that excited and passionate? Uh, and that does count a lot for us. We have hired a bunch of people who uh, are very smart, very motivated, but don't know a ton of security yet. And then we watch them grow and become very good over the next couple of months and years. Awesome. No, that's great. That's great knowledge right there. Great, uh, great feedback for sure. People definitely, definitely will appreciate that. Um, what did you um, first start kind of, you know, learning when you started getting more into this, the security field? Like, what was, what were the, like the primary tools or programming languages and things that you really gravitated towards uh, to expand your, your your knowledge? Yeah. So. Um one thing that is very useful to know when you're doing security work, sometimes you need to write like a one-off script to automate something. Uh, so I would say knowing a scripting language like Python or Ruby, uh, not necessarily you're a master of it, but you at least can write, say, 10 or 20 lines to um, just automate something that's very repetitive or you need to run this across you know, 100 different requests or being able to write some short scripts and. Uh, either Python or Ruby, I think, is very useful. Uh, a lot of security tools are also written in one of those languages. Um, I will say, if you're interested in web application security, which is, in my opinion, a great place to start, because essentially every company has web apps, and they all need security people. So 
Uh, if you're interested in getting the web application security, the single best resource that I know of is a book called The Web Application Hacker's Handbook. Uh, there's a second edition, and uh, it's very long, so it might seem a bit intimidating, but the information is actually really great about you know, how does the web work, how do websites work in a bit more detail, and what are common flaws you see. Um, so that's a really good resource. Um, OWASP uh, is another good resource that says, hey, here's common attacks. Um, and yeah, there, there's a lot of good stuff out there uh, freely available. I can send you some more links so you can put it in the show notes. Awesome, awesome, that'd be great. Okay. Um, so I guess, is there any other advice that you could share um, for somebody who's looking to get towards the, the security field um, that you know you think is really valuable from your experience? You know. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I guess the biggest thing is a lot of people hear security and think about security and they think it's very scary and very intimidating and uh, like it's this massive complex black box that you have no idea how it works uh, and it does seem like that before you get into it but really everyone i know uh, every single person bar none who does security professionally ranging from the people who are very new to the people who give keynotes at the top conferences uh, all of them started obviously knowing nothing but also, a lot of people are self-taught, at least a little bit. Um, I think the most important thing is to realize there isn't a one place or one resource that's going to take you uh, to exactly where you want to be. And, and that's a little bit scary, but also like that's okay. Um, just to reflect and say, hey, you know, all these other people who are really good, they you know, were just very curious about how stuff works and wanted to know more and then they just continued learning on their own until they learned essentially what they need to learn. Um, so I, I don't know if this is very specific, uh, but just know that lots of people who do this all the time are constantly self-learning and if you can start that process when you're starting out, that's going to help you for years to come. Uh, I spend a lot of my time uh, Googling for like, hey, I am uh, seeing this new technology or I am trying to exploit this type of vulnerability, you know, what, what is the related work that people have done already in the space? Um, so being comfortable and confident not knowing something uh, and just being willing to say, okay, you know, let me take an hour or so and I'll figure out how this works. Uh, that's a big part of being a security person, honestly. Awesome. Well, that's great. Great knowledge. 